Though Buddhism had its start in India, once it arrived on the islands of Japan, it didn't take long for it to become as Japanese as rice cakes. Despite some early suspicion of the foreign religion, it rapidly took hold among government elites. Emperor Shomu broke ground on the world's largest bronze Buddha statue in 752 CE, not even 200 years after the first missionaries from China and Korea. Shomu was the first ex-emperor to become a Buddhist priest, but he was not the last. The teachings of the Buddha permeated every facet of life, including Japan's folk tales. The story of Chujo Hime is the earliest to incorporate Buddhist themes and iconography. And after we're done with story time, we'll see if there might not be a kernel of truth to it. Our story is set in the 7th century. A government minister and his wife have been trying for a child for many years. One day, they climbed up the stairs of Hase Temple to pray to its famous Kanon statue. You can still go to Hase Temple, and you can still pray to the Kanon, but it'll cost you a thousand yen, and you're not allowed to take pictures. The couple's prayer was answered in the form of a child. Chujo Hime. Sadly, when Chujo Hime was only five years old, her mother passed away. Even at a young age, Chujo Hime was renowned for her beauty and talent. At the age of nine, she was summoned to the court of the Empress at Heijo Palace to perform the koto before all the courtiers. Much was made of her skill throughout the Imperial Palace. Chujo Hime's renown bought her the envy of her father's second wife, Terio. Yes, this is an evil stepmother story. The jealous Terio would frequently scold her stepdaughter and accuse her of theft. But Terio was waiting for the opportunity to do something far more evil. Chujo Hime's father was ordered to make a circuit of all other regions controlled by the emperor. This journey would take several years. He left Terio in charge of Chujo Hime. The scheming stepmother ordered one of the family's vassals to kill the 13-year-old child. The vassal came upon the young girl while she was praying. Instead of begging for her life, she only asked her assassin to wait until she was finished with her sutra. After I am finished with my prayers for my mother, she said, you can cut off my head. This display of piety humbled the would-be assassin and he lost the will to carry out his mission. Instead, he took Chujo Hime's hand, and together they fled the capital. They found a safe haven at a Buddhist temple. Now, there are several temples that claim to be the one where the two took refuge, but this one is closest to my apartment. Chujo Hime and the failed assassin both devoted themselves to the faith. And after a few years, Chujo Hime's father conveniently stumbled across his daughter during his journey. He returned home with his estranged daughter, but Chujo Hime's rescuer continued his religious studies. There's no mention of what happened to the evil stepmother, so let's say an anvil fell on her. After Chujo Hime returned to the capital, she received an invitation from the emperor to join his court, but she refused. She had found her true calling. She became a nun at Taima Temple at the age of 16. And it's she who was credited with weaving the Taima Mandara, one of Japan's national treasures. She entered into Nirvana only 13 years later, at the age of 29. The cause of death was, quote, women's disease. And I'm not sure if that's a euphemism or just how medicine used to work. In most versions of the Chujo Hime story, her father is Fujiwara no Kamatari, one of the emperor's chief ministers and founder of the influential Fujiwara clan. Kamatari was an opponent of Buddhism and an ally of Prince Nakano Oi, who made an appearance in my very first video in this project. In 645 CE, Kamatari and the prince assassinated the head of the rival Soga clan to destroy the clan's influence over the imperial house. The Soga clan, by the way, were strong adherents of Buddhism, so Kamatari might have had other goals in mind. 
Kamatari may have delayed Buddhism's entrance into the halls of power, but it wasn't long before Kamatari himself was absorbed into a story that's mostly an excuse to visit lots of different Buddhist temples. Today, the palace where Kamatari worked is little more than a grassy field. While just down the road, the Bronze Buddha is still there. <laughs> 